Hey there, everyone. I'm Nina. Welcome to Ever After Stained Glass. So I love the mermaid from the prefect's bathroom in Harry Potter's Goblet of Fire. Every time I see her, my heart flutters and giggles, and I just love it. I'm obsessed. So I wanted one for my own bathroom to hang over my jacuzzi. So that's what we're going to be making today. Uh, I started doing stained glass uh, seven months ago in August. It is now the beginning of February. I hope I did my math right there. Anyways, um, and I have become just completely obsessed with stained glass and the whole process of it. Uh, so I wanted to uh, share what I do to get a piece from start to finish. Um, at the beginning of this video, there was a stencil. You could totally use that if you do get into stained glass and you want one for yourself, you want to make one for yourself, you don't want to make a stencil, feel free to use mine that I made. So I am completely like 100% YouTube taught. I mean, I looked at videos for a month before I bought the, the stuff to even, you know, uh, anything to do with stained glass. I just binge watched how to YouTube videos and um, they were really helpful, but I noticed there weren't any, you know, time lapse from beginning to end so that I can kind of get an idea of the whole process. I just saw bits and um, pieces of, you know, here's how to foil, here's how to stain glass. And, you know, I was just kind of like, okay, well, how long is the process for one piece? So I wanted to do this time lapse video to show you from start to end. Now, it didn't show the process of me, you know, uh, finding the stencil and cutting each piece out. Like here it shows that I'm going through and tracing the little pieces onto the glass. Well, I pre-cut those. So um, there's some bits that aren't in here, but hopefully you can kind of fill in the gaps and, you know, um, with that. And I'll mention it along the way if there's anything that I missed. Uh, so here, um, you know, whenever you go and score the glass and break them to the uh, dimensions and the shape that you want uh, to fit into the overall piece, you have to remember that sometimes you don't get a clean cut. Like this shape right here is almost impossible for me to do. And later you'll see that I do wind up, um, you know, actually successfully doing it, but I had to grind it to get that way. More on grinding later on in the video. But um, you will break pieces. If you guys notice the beginning of this video, the very first piece that I cut, I broke and I had to redraw the, the uh, you know, little, stencil for it and just redid it. Just remember to have grace for yourself. Um, this piece that I'm doing here was, is the seventh piece, eighth piece that I've done. Um, so I, you know, the first couple pieces that I broke, I just got really frustrated. Know that that's completely normal. You know, pros even break glass. It's not a big deal. Just go in and, and redo it. Not a big deal. I'm about to break one here in a minute. You guys will see. But anyways, um, just have some grace for yourself whenever you break them and it's going to be okay. These longer pieces that I'm doing here, I think those are the, you know, my favorite to go in and, um, you know, break because of the noise that they make. Um, later on in a video, I'll show you guys kind of what they sound like um, but for now we're just kind of time lapsing for time's sake because these are very consuming um, time involved processes so I'm just kind of speeding through there's two colors that I didn't actually film myself doing I just wanted you guys to get the gist of kind of what is all into stained glass so that's what I'm doing here uh, the next step would be to grind your glass. You know, whenever you go and, and score it with your glass cutters and you snap off the pieces, any Sharpie that's left over, see like here, I'm taking all that Sharpie line off because ultimately that is the stencil that I want, um, or I'm sorry, that is the piece that I want that's gonna have to match my stencil, which I have another copy of laying down. 
This process is the foiling process. I think this is the most chill process because I can straight up just sit on the couch cuddled up with my puppy and my fiance watching a good movie, just chilling. Maybe grab a little mimosa, just whatever I want to do. Um, the other projects, you know, you kind of have to be at your workstation. This one, it's definitely time consuming, but it's also pretty therapeutic. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking each piece that I've cut, ground, and washed. I didn't show the washing part, um, but you do have to wash it really well. If there are any Sharpie marks left over, take alcohol and um, get all that Sharpie off and clean the edges really well. The grinding um, causes some residue, you know, glass dust residue that you want to make sure is completely off all the edges. So you'll really want to do a thorough job cleaning. Um, and then whenever you go to foil, like I'm doing here, uh, you'll use a fib. And I prefer this straight edge one because it just works better for me. There's all kinds that you'll find. Um, but here I'm just taking the foil and wrapping it completely around the piece. Uh, even on both sides and uh, then I go and fit the edges it's actually called burnishing um, you'll burnish them real well on the edges and then you'll tuck in the sides fold it in kind of like you're you know doing a little present or something um, you probably wouldn't have to uh, you know burnish the edges <laughs> as much as I do um, but I really want to make sure that later my, uh, you know, foil doesn't peel off. So I really make sure to get it stuck everywhere, especially with the more textured pieces. I take my time and I just really try to go into each edge um, of the glass, especially where there's texture. So that's what I'm doing on all of these pieces. Uh, there was 108 pieces in total. So I was definitely foiling for quite a while on this specific piece, but it was totally worth it. Um, you know, whenever you go in and you burnish, you want to make sure that you get the edges really well first. And then you'll go and fold in the sides and the corners. And then see here, I am just really going along and making it very nice and snug around the you know the face of each side of the glass here's a better view this shows kind of you know an up close of my process sorry about the blurriness guys of just getting in there and getting her done this is again the most therapeutic process your hands don't get dirty um, and if they do start to get sweaty you want to go and wash them immediately because you know if you get grease or body oils onto the glass it will actually prevent or later cause your foil to lift after solder and you don't want that because you've spent so much time making this thing you know beautiful you, the last thing that you want to do is to have your beautiful piece wind up falling apart because of it so just keep that in mind once all the pieces have been foiled, I took them over to place them in the final position of how I want them to lay to begin soldering them all together. Uh, for all you puzzle doers out there, this will totally be your jam. I've never been good at puzzles, uh, so it's pretty difficult for me, especially without the stencil. I just kind of wanted to do this and test myself. Um, which I later regretted so much, but we got there. Um, this piece has straight edges, a straight top and a straight bottom. So um, I put together here uh, just kind of roughly how it's supposed to look. When we solder, we have to use flux. I use liquid flux in a little jar and set it to the side. These are some items that you can take a look at and know that you will need this. Um, these are not all the items that you use, but the basic ones. Uh, you'll definitely want to keep as safe as you possibly can using a respirator. Uh, here I'm just tinning the tip of the soldering iron to get it nice and clean before I go in with a solder. 
uh, I paint the little copper foil areas with some flux and I just begin soldering. I didn't show you this part where I'm taking off the tape. I actually previously put tape down to just kind of hold it in place. Otherwise the pieces would be sliding around and it would be the biggest headache. So um, that's one part that I didn't show you guys. Just tape one side of it once you get it all together and straight exactly how you want it. And then you'll go in and tape it like you saw there. Um, that was after I soldered the first, you know, whole front of it. Now I'm just going in, I removed that painter's tape, and now I'm doing the final side. You'll notice that I'm not completely going to the edges of the uh, project that I'm working on because later we're going to take some zinc rods up against the sides of it my piece is a straight piece well at least the majority of it is the top bottom and sides i want to look completely straight almost kind of like a picture so i'm going to be putting zinc uh, rods that are on the sides to hold them together i'm pretty sure they're not called rides or rods have a little bit of grace with me i'm a beginner at this so even more so while i say that i'm a beginner you know, I started this process seven months ago and I absolutely love it. I wasn't sure if, you know, I really would love it, um, you know, and spending that amount of money because let's be honest, this is an expensive hobby. So um, I think just in these past few months, I've probably, you know, spent, I don't know, anywhere from 800 to a thousand dollars just on you know the glass and the foil and the soldering iron and my grinder and some items for my workstation to keep organized it's expensive but my heart flutters and it brings me joy and I really want to encourage you if this is something you feel that you might want to do go take a class You'd be surprised if you'll just give it a goog and say, hey Google, where is the nearest gl stained glass shop? I bet you anything they've got glass, glass, you know, shop making or glass making shops there. I'm not sure what they're called, um, but they have classes to where you can go and spend less than a hundred bucks to see if you love it. I didn't even do that. <laughs> I should have. Um, again. <laughs> do as I uh, say not as I do speaking of wear gloves whenever you're working with flux you've got to wear gloves to protect yourself so make sure you do that I didn't do that and I regret it I've done lots of research I've learned my lesson I know uh, then after it's done you're just gonna want to give it a quick wash I didn't have any quick uh, ease I think it's called it's a spray that neutralizes the flux and the patina that you use I didn't have that so I gave it a wash with baking soda and Dawn I dried it and polished it and here is the final result I absolutely love her I hope you do too and if you're looking to do this as well I wish the best of luck to you and thanks for watching if you want to see more, like and subscribe. Thanks so much for all of your support.